the binomial distribution. Um, many types of probability problems can be only two possible outcomes or they can be reduced to two possible outcomes. You see the word bi, you guys know that that means two. So a binomial distribution can be reduced to two possible outcomes. Now that does not mean that there's only going to be two x values, but it just means that there's going to be a success or a failure. So for example, when you toss a coin, it can either be heads or tails, right? Okay? And if I say, well, it's a problem of getting a head, um, a head would be a success, the other one would be a, getting a tail. So you have two outcomes there. Getting a baby, you can either have a boy or girl. And these ones have 50-50, but there's some other things that are two chances that are not always 50-50. So for example, it could rain or not rain. And those don't have a 50-50 chance each, but um, you, you have a lot of probabilities that you can reduce down to two outcomes. Either it happens or it doesn't happen. That last one that we just did, either you win or you lose, right? They didn't have equal probabilities. It wasn't a 50-50 chance, but you either won or you lost, right? Um, so a lot of probability problems can be reduced down to two outcomes. There's four criteria to be a binomial. Um, one, there has to be a fixed number of trials. Okay, so I'm going to put a little dot here. I don't know why the bullets didn't show up on here. So there has to be a fixed number of trials. So we have to know that we're going to try playing like 10 times or we're going to play the game 20 times or we're going to have five children with the boys and girls. Um, there has to be a fixed number of trials. We have to know how many times we're going to do it. Um, each trial has to have only two outcomes, okay? So to be binomial, you have to have two outcomes. There has to be a fixed number of trials. And the outcomes have to be independent of each other, okay? What that means is the one does not affect the other. So when I was just talking about that last one where we were rolling the dice and trying to get doubles, every time you roll the dice, they're totally independent of each other. The dice does not remember what it did on the last try, okay? Every time you have a child... It's totally independent. Whether or not you have a girl the second time does not depend on whether or not you had a boy the first time. Your body does not remember what it had, okay? They're totally independent from each other. Um, flipping a coin, every time you flip a coin, it's independent, okay? The coin cannot talk to the other the coin and say, oh, last time you did a head, this time you should do a tail, okay? They're independent. So the outcomes have to be independent of each other. And then one more thing, the probability for each success has to remain the same for each trial. So what that means is every time you do it, it still has to have that same probability of happening. You can't change the probability every time. So every time you have a kid, you still have really a 50-50 chance of having a boy or girl. Or every time you flip a coin, there's always a 50-50 chance. Or every time you play that one game, what's your chance of getting doubles? It's always a one in six chance, right? It doesn't change from time to time. That probability stays the same for every trial. Okay, these are just vocabulary words. P of S, that would make sense for probability of a success, right? So you'll see that P of S, that means probability of a success, probability that success is going to happen. That does not mean probability times success. That means probability of a success. P of F would be probability of a failure, Lowercase p is the number of probability, the numerical probability of the success. So this is like the symbol, and this is an actual number. So I sometimes tell people that p of s is actually equal to little p. Okay, that's the probability of success. And q is the numerical probability of the failure. So p of f is actually q. The probability of a failure is your q number. Did we use p and q before in this class? No? Okay. P and Q have to always add up to 1 because the probability of a success and the probability of a failure always have to add up to 1. So what you're going to notice here is they have probability of a success is P, probability of a failure is 1 minus P, which is Q. In other words, P and Q have to always add up to 100%. Okay, you got success and failure. you got two outcomes. You're, 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 you only have two values. Okay, and then N is the number of trials. Obviously, we've used that. And X is the number of successes in N trials. So I want you to write that down, that X is your number of successes. And so X could be 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up to N. X will always start at 0. Okay, are you listening to me? X will always start at 0 because you might have no successes. You might have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to N. So X will always be 0. 
X will always start at zero, sorry, and go to N. Okay, here's the longhand formula to find each probability. How many of you guys want to type this in with all the factorials and the exponents? Okay, if you do, great, follow the formula, plug everything in. If not, you go, mm-mm, and you ignore that, and you grab your graphing calculator, and you find the thing that says binomial PDF, and all you have to do is type in NP and X, and it will, again, accurately do that for us. Now, why are we finding binomial PDF? What do you guys think this stands for? Binomial, probability, distribution, and then the F stands for function. So binomial, probability, distribution, function. I'm curious who can find that on their calculator, where it's at. Okay? So if you search around, can you find where it's at? You're finding something that says binomial PDF. And this is a probability distribution. And so you're probably looking under the stat button, right? It's not in the stat button. There's another button on our calculator. I'll give you a hint. Find this on your calculator. You gotta find the thing that says distribution, D-I-S-T-R. So you look on your calculator a little bit. It's right over here, right above the VARS button. Okay? So second VARS, and as you scroll down through these, you'll find it, it's right down here. Okay? You don't see it right away, you gotta scroll down a little bit. So we definitely probably need to write that down on the sheet because we're gonna forget, okay, where that's at but it's second VARS, and then you have to scroll down. On mine, it's letter A. I think pretty much everybody's it's letter A, but I, I can't guarantee that. Okay, so second VARS, and that's the distribution button, and then scroll down to letter A. Okay. So we go jump right into the examples, okay? So this says, a survey found that one out of every five Americans say he or she has visited a doctor in any given month. If 10 people are selected at random, find the probability that exactly three ha will have visited a doctor last month, okay? So right now, let's figure out what the probability of a success is. A success means you visited the doctor. What's the chance you're gonna visit a doctor? What does it say in here? One out of five, okay? One out of five people. So that's our probability of success. That's our little P. P is one out of five or 20%. One out of five or 0 0.20. I don't care which one you do. One out of five, that's the same as 0.2, okay? That's our probability of success. Okay, what are the other things we need to know? Okay, probability of failure. We won't actually have to type that into binomial PDF, but let's write that down. Probability of a failure, that's that Q. So this is probability of a success. This is probability of failure. Okay, probability of failure would be 0 0.8, right? Four out of five. All right, and those add up to one. Perfect. What else do we need to know? Number of trials. Now, what do you think number of trials means? How many people? That's our, that's our number. That's the big number. So n is what? 10. Okay? n equals 10. And we need to find the probability that exactly 3. So we're finding the probability that x is equal to 3. Okay? That's what we're trying to find. That x is 3. So x is our number of outcomes. So, like I said, you have to go to binomial PDF. And if you have the newer calculators, you'll type these in where they say. If you have an older calculator, you've got to follow the order of what I said. And what did I say the order was? N, then P, then X. It's actually easy to remember. It's alphabetical order. So binomial PDF, you type in N first. I got to... Okay. N, then P, then X. So you're going to type in 10, and then 0.2, and then my X value is 3. Number of trials is 10, 
probability is 0.2, and my x value is 3, exactly 3. What did we get? 0.201, which is what I have on this slide. Okay? You should get 0.201. So there's a 20% chance that this is going to happen. Now, before you leave, okay, we are going to make the probability distribution for all the possible outcomes of this, just so that you see what's going on here. Okay? So I'm going to stop this. Okay, a survey from Teenage Research Unlimited, Northbrook, Illinois, found that 30% of teenage customers receive their spending money from part-time jobs. I'm going to stop there. First of all, you would hope that if they're doing this research, that they had a good sample, okay, that they had a large sample. Um, it's kind of weird that it just says 30%. To me, it sounds like they asked a few people and just got 30. Like, that, why would it come out exactly 30? But a lot of these numbers are kind of fictitious, like they're made up because they're not giving you resource, although this does say from Northbrook, Illinois. So I don't really know. But um, ultimately, if you are a true researcher, you'd want to know where those numbers are coming from, okay? So just a reminder of that. Um, but we found that 30% of teenage customers receive their spending money from part-time jobs. So right there, the probability that they get their spending money from a part-time job or that they have a part-time job is what? 30%, 0.3, right? And then the probability that they don't have a part-time job is 0.7. So this is a success failure. This is a binomial, okay? Because you kind of have this probability and either you're going to have a part-time <coughs> job or you're not, okay? Um, now that not could be having a full-time job or having no job. It could be any of those. <coughs> But really, we can reduce it down to two outcomes, okay? Either you have a part-time job or you don't have a part-time job. So, um, so our probability of success, I'm just going to write this down. Remember, we had um, that little p. That little p, that probability is 0.3. And just for a side note, then q would have to be 0.7. We don't need that q for what we're doing right here, but you will need it if you're going to then go and find like the mean and the standard deviation. There's formulas for those, we'll learn those today. So I just write it down just because, okay? Um, if five teenagers are selected at random, so what letter do we usually use for that number? N, yep, so N is five, we have five people. Okay, find the probability that at least three of them will have part-time jobs, three or more, okay? So when it says at least three, this does not mean that X is three. Okay, it's a little different than the last time. It means we want to know for x equal to 3 or more. So that means 3 or 4 or 5. Okay, at least 3 is three, the same as 3 or more. So from the last one that we did um, in the last video, we just had the probability of exactly, I don't know if it was exactly 3, I think it was 3 again. <laughs> um, this one says at least three, so we need to go three all the way up to five. Now this would be an or, it's not three and, you can't have three and four and five, it's gonna be three or four or five. So the question is, what are we gonna do with these probabilities? When it's an or, we always add, okay? So we're gonna take the probability that it's three or four or five, we gotta do three of them and we gotta add them all up. Now I'm gonna go back to my distribution, what it would look like. We have x values, and the x values are going to start at zero because none of them could have a job, or one of them, or two of them, or three of them, or four of them, or all five of them, right? Now remember, only 30% have part-time jobs. So the chance that this is going to happen, that all five would say, yes, I have a part-time job, that would be like not going to happen probably, okay? And we'd probably expect it to be about two out of the five. Two out of the five would be 40%, yeah? One or, one or two people would say, yep, I got a part-time job, Okay. Like, it's like, based on this research, if I asked five of you, how many of you have a part-time job, I would expect maybe one or two of you to say yes, okay? And maybe it's more. Well, then we're probably a little different than this, right? But what's the chance that I'm going to get one or two people? That's going to have a much higher chance than all five people, right? So we're finding the probabilities of these x values based on this information. Now, we're going to want this number and this number, and this number all together, and that's going to be our answer because it says at least three, three or more. So that's probably three or four or five. So we got a choice. We can do on our calculator, we can do it three different times, or we can do it in that table 
and we'll have all three numbers and then we just add them up. So I kind of like the table idea again because it gives me the big picture. So let's go ahead and create that table and practice that one more time. Okay. Now remember we're going to be using binomial PDF. Okay. And I just abbreviate that BIN, bin PDF, binomial PDF. And then it, what's the order in which we usually type things in? It's N, then P, then X, right? Or alphabetical order. And this time, our X values are going to be everything that's in list one. So for X, we're not going to put three, four, five. We're not going to put three. We're going to put actually list one. So you grab your calculator and you go to your distributions. That's second, then VARs. Okay, second VARs, and you won't see it right on that screen. You've got to scroll down, or you can even scroll up. I think it's almost faster scrolling up. If you scroll up, you'll see binomial PDF. Okay. Oh, and then if we do that, that's just going to give it to us on our main screen. We don't want to do that. We've got to go to our list first. Okay, so I'm going to quit out of this. We'll go to that next. So quit out of that. We've got to go to Stat, Edit, and we want it to go into these lists, right? I'm going to clear out my list, so if you remember how to clear list, you go to the top and hit clear, not delete, okay? And then go to the top of list one, hit clear, not delete. And then we, the numbers we want in list one are just zero through five. Okay, and the more you practice this with me, the easier it will become on your own. You'll get kind of in a habit of it. So I always say, while I'm doing this, even though if you understand it, try to practice it. Because it's kind of like a skill, if you practice along with you know, your teammates in a sport, you get better at it and it becomes automatic and you don't have to think about it, okay? So, um, you know, practice with me if you can. Then over here in list two, don't make the mistake of going right here. Go all the way to the top, okay? So list two has to be highlighted all the way up at the top. Now go to the binomial, okay? So second distribution, go to that binomial PDF. And number of trials was five. Probability was 0.3, so 5, comma, 0.3, comma, and the X value is everything in list 1, so second 1. That gives you list 1. We're going to paste that in there, and it all comes up there, and if you have the old school one, that's what you should have typed in, okay? And then you go ahead and hit enter, and all the probabilities show up. So remember how I was talking about how I would think one or two people would say yes? Look which, two, which ones have the highest probability. One and two, don't they? So if I ask five people, most likely I'm going to get one or two people that are going to say yes, I have a part-time job. Those have the highest probability. And then it kind of goes down from there. So to answer a question, how do we get the answer of 0.162? We need to add up these last three numbers. Okay, And the last three numbers were 0.1323. And that's if we had done binomial PDF with just a 3. And then with just a 4, it's 0 0.02835. And then for 5, it's 0.00243. And as I add those three numbers up, I get, I'm going to quit out of here and go ahead and add them up, 0.1323 plus 0 0.02835 plus 0 0.00243. And I get point. 16308. Now, the question is, why do I have 0 0.16308 and why do they have 0 0.162? Did I type a number in wrong or do other people have that 0 0.16308? You have this too? Okay. So, my question is, what, what happened here? Well, when they use the formula, they may have just taken all these numbers and rounded to three places. Okay. Um, and if you take those and then you add them up, you're going to get different rounding errors. And in fact, I can see that right now. If I take these first three places and add those up, that actually does give you this. Okay? If you just take the first three places. But because we took these last places and added those in, we have a word off by a thousand, uh, what, tenth, hundred, thousandth? Okay? Is this answer or our answer more accurate? Ours is more accurate. Right? Because it uses all the digits. Now, <laughs> what I did when I chose the um, problems on your homework was I chose the ones, they had just regular ones, and they had ones that said calculator. And I chose the ones that said calculator. So I'm hoping it kind of explains it in terms of the calculator, and it takes the more exact answer. Okay? 
But again, you ought to let me know. I think it's pretty, it's a little bit lenient when it gets out to the tens and hundreds. It'll allow it even if you're off by a hundreds or thousands. But let me know if you're having issues with that, okay? It's possible that it's a rounding issue and that we're still doing it right. Um, I kind of would like to know which way it goes or if it's okay with either or. You know, if you, if, you if you find anything out about that, let me know, okay? So I chose the ones that said calculator, so I'm hoping it will be more accurate to this. So if it were to say round out to the three decimal places, you'd be okay, you know. All right. All right, so that's how we go about doing that one. Um, my next question for you is this. What if N was 20 and I wanted three or more? What if N was 20 and I was asking you for the probability of three or more? How would, this, how would that change this problem? How would that change this table if N was 20? You'd have to add up from 3 all the way to 20. No. Could probably do it effectively. Is it going to take a little more time? Yeah. Are you going to have to be a little more careful when typing in the, the, the probabilities for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? You have to write all those down. Or somehow I have two calculators side by side so you could type them all in. Anybody got any better ideas? What do you mean? Okay. Just add up 0, 1, and 2? And then do what? Subtract it from 1. Why? Because all of these numbers, good, I'm glad some of you came up with that on your own, and maybe other people were thinking it, okay, you could just hear the people here in Owine talking, okay, but all these numbers have to add up to one. So we should all be cognitively thinking about this, don't zone me out here, okay? If this goes from 3 to 20, that's going to be a lot of numbers to add up. So would it not be faster to just add up 0, 1, 2 and subtract it from 1? Wouldn't that give me everything that's left? That should give me 3 through 20, okay? So it's this idea that all of this has to total to 1. So if I don't want to have to add up all these, I could just add up the smaller amount, subtract from 1. I'm going to show you one other trick here in just a minute, okay? All right. There's one other thing that I want to show you. Um, there is actually a table. It's called Table B. I'm not sure how you get to it in your e-textbook. <laughs> you can play around with that. Maybe someone can figure that out while we're talking. But um, I haven't tried it. It's in our hardcover book. It's in the back of it. But if you toss a coin three times, so N is three, find the probability of getting exactly two heads. So probability is one half. That's still 50%. And it would be the X is equal to two. There's actually a table of values if your probabilities are these numbers. There's a table of values, and then you kind of go through this table and where n is, and then each of the x's, and all the numbers are kind of in here. So it's like a probability distribution for those. So there's a table somewhere, and this is the old school way of doing it. Okay? Why? Because people didn't want to have calculators, and to sit there and use that one formula. Do you guys remember the formula I showed you for binomial? It had all those exclamation points in it and stuff, and I said, cross that out. Well, if you had to do that by hand, no calculator, right? It's going to take you quite a while to figure out three and four, you know, <laughs> add all those up. And so they had these tables, and they used the numbers in the tables. And basically this table is that list, like that list two, you know, for probability of n equal to three with p equal to 0.5. And these are your x values here, and here's your probabilities. Now, does a, does a table going to have every possibility of what we could do in it? No. It only has these probabilities. So what if you have a probability that's not 0.5 or not 0.3? What if you have a probability that's like 0.87? Can you use this table? No. So I left this slide in. I thought about ignoring it. But there are tables, and you can look through the table. It's called Table B, um, and get those same values. And so we probably could have looked up in Table B the last problem that we just did, and it would have had those probabilities. Now, what are those probabilities going to be rounded to? I think we just found the answer to our question. 
looks like three places, right? So those are the ones that they're adding up is the ones rounded to three places. Our probabilities in our calculator are rounded out to four, five, six places. Okay? Not going to use the table. All right. We are going to do more practice with the binomial distribution, but um, there's one more little thing with the binomial distribution. The mean, the average, is just n times p. It's actually very easy to calculate. So do you have to take your lists and do one variable stats and find the mean? No, you could, but actually it's going to be equivalent to just n times p. We're going to check that with this last problem because I have all those numbers in here. So I'm going to just try it out with the one variable stats that's in my calculator, and then I'm going to compare it to these. Another way you can do variance is you actually just take n times p times q. And the shortcut for standard deviation is square root of n times p times q. So it's very quick and easy. So let's use the numbers from our last problem and find these, and then let's also run one variable stats and compare them. And then we'll move on to the next problem. I just want to verify these equations real quick. So on the last problem, n was 5, right? Yes, the last problem we did. So not the coin tossing one, the one before that. n was 5, and the probability was 30%, right? 5 times 0.3. On average, we would expect, expect how many people? 5 times 0.3 was 1.5 people, and that's why I was saying that I would expect one or two people to say, yes, I have a part-time job. So this answer is 1.5. Variance is going to be n times p times q, so 5 times 0.3 times 0.7. So variance is very simple to calculate for binomial distributions. It doesn't take a big, long formula. So 5 times 0.3 times 0.7, the variance should be 1.05. And then the standard deviation should be the square root of that number. So square root of 1.05 is approximately 1.02469577. And if I want to round that, you know, about 1.0, really, if we go out to one decimal place, because really these were supposed to be rounded to one more than the data, which would just be one decimal place. So there's our answers. Now... Grab your calculator. We already have that table in there. So go to stat, calculate, one variable stats. Our list one needs to say list one. It needs to be comma list two because we have a frequency list with probabilities in it. Hit calculate and check it out. X bar is what? 1.5. Standard deviation right here. 1.02. Oh, look, hey, it's that same number. And variance isn't on here. Does anybody remember the trick to get this whole number and square it? Hopefully we do now. We've done it enough times. So you quit out of here, and it's under the VARS button. And you go down to statistics, and you go down to number 4, and then you hit squared. And there it is, 1.05. Okay? So I would love it if in one variable stats it would list the variance and the standard deviation, but it doesn't. <laughs> so we have to find variance on our own. So these are, I look right here, shortcut formulas. So you don't have to make the whole table. You can just use these formulas. Now these formulas are listed on the formula sheet. And the formula sheet will be available for you for your test. It's also available for you for your homework. So what am I talking about? When you're doing your homework over on the right side, those little buttons... There's one that says formula sheet, I think. And if you click on that, you should see these three formulas on there. Can, are you verifying yes? You saw them, Morgan? Okay. In that, you're looking at the formula sheet? Good. Okay. Are we good? Cheers. Starma, I saw you raise your coffee. That was, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember what her name is. Chantel. Chantel? Chantel, can you hear me? <laughs> I was saying cheers to you. When I said that, you raised your coffee. I looked up. I can, I can see you because I got you guys on Starmont. <laughs> I can't hear. I can't see you. So I didn't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Just checking in, seeing if anybody else has some coffee there this morning. Oh, Gatorade? Water or Gatorade there? Uh, 
water. <laughs> <laughs> you guys spy on you guys, and you're just like, what is she talking about? Okay. Let's, um, let's keep going. That was all right. Okay, example 5-23. Likelihood of twins. A statistical bulletin published Metropolitan Life Insurance Company reported that 2% of all American births result in twins. Okay. If a random sample of 8,000 births is taken, find the mean, variance, standard deviation, and number of births. How many of you want to make the table from 0 to 8,000? Yeah. So we're not going to do the table way and run one variable stats, right? So we want to use our shortcuts for these. So I want you to use the three shortcut formulas to find these. Let's first write down our important information. We need to know what P is, what Q is, and we need to know what N is. And in this one, we're not finding a probability, so we don't need to know what's the probability of X happening. Okay, so we're not doing that on this one. We're just finding N, P, and Q. N's the easy one, 8,000. I always have people say P is 0.2. This is a typical mistake on a homework. P is not 0.2. You got to go two places to the left, <laughs> point zero 0.02. I got so you did it, didn't you? <laughs> that always happens. 2% is not point 0.2. That's 20%. 20% is point 0.2. 2% 2 is point zero 0.02. You got to go two places to the left. Two out of 100 is point zero 0.02. Q would be what? Not point 0.8. <laughs> point 0.98. All right. Point 0.98. <laughs> All right. Woo. <laughs> it's too early to think, right? Okay. 0 0.02, 0 0.98, and 8,000. Go ahead and follow the three formulas for mean, variance, and standard deviation. I'm going to call on someone in a second. Okay? Okay, hey, Levi, you're up for mean. Are you ready? Yep. <laughs> yep. One sixty. I missed a number. Oh, I did 800 times 0 0.02. You're right, 160. I had 16. See? <laughs> That's where it's early. I was like, so I hesitated there. Thank you. 160. All right. Next one. Hannah, you got variance. You don't have variance. You can get it. Just times them all. All three of these numbers. <laughs> And don't do like me. Type in 8,000. Yep. 156.8. All right. And Andrew, you have standard deviation. Yeah, their mic's way up in the front. 0.5. Point five. Point five. I missed the first part. Twelve point five. Oh, awesome! Twelve point five. I missed the first little part. All right, twelve point five. Rounded to one decimal place. Sweet. Okay. Um. So here's our answers. Awesome. Okay. That's it for that. I'm gonna stop.